Hi, everybody. So welcome for this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Um, the main the main thing that I, that I would like to talk now, and Jeff uh, joined the meeting um, mainly for that, is now that you have a code signing certificate for uh, Jenkins code releases, he was interested to see if we could also sign um, components, uh, not I mean not, not just Jenkins code releases, but also components like uh, remoting, um, which personally I think would be a really good idea. The thing is now it brings brings uh, a specific challenge like um, should we I mean specific not, not technical challenges but like should we reuse the release at CI the Jenkins um, environment to sign those components should we allow uh, maintainers to, to trigger jobs on, on that machine should we deploy something else um, so I just created uh, this morning um, a specific ticket for this which is um, where is that Infra 2619. I don't know if you have, I think I think we'll have to continue the, the discussion on the mailing list, but I don't know if you already have any inputs or ideas or opinion on this. So so for me, I I like the idea and would defer it completely, defer any implementation on it, at least from you, Olivier, or from me, or even from potentially Tim until after we get security and LTS releases under control and resolve for core release automation. Um, so there is the concept sounds good, but the, the schedule wise, I would rather not dis distract us at all. So from, from a, from a scheduled point of view, when is uh, the next time when Jeff, when do you need to renew the, the code signing certificate for the, for the trees? Uh, for yes. remote it? That's the, the one concern of the schedule from the remoting side is that I've been purchasing an individual code signing certificate for remoting and it um, expires here really soon now. So it's, I think, exactly June 12th or 10th. I could look it up. It's right about then. Now, I don't have any current plans for a remoting release at the moment. So it's not like I have to have something immediately. But there's a big hope of not having to purchase another code signing one for anything, that, individual code signing certificate for anything that might come up for yet another year. Yes. So my, my argument is the $500 should be reimbursed to you by the Jenkins project. And it's cheaper for us to do that than to risk trying to accelerate the delivery of the core release automation capability. And if we derail core release automation, that has a much bigger impact than if we spend five hundred dollars of Jenkins project money. I'm, I'm just I'm just wondering, um, is it enough to just use the Maven release plugin for it? Because then we can reuse most of the process that we already have for the weekly releases. We don't have to add any specific parameter or whatever. Do you know yeah. how do how do you release the re remoting? Jeff, is it Maven release prepare and perform? Yeah, that's all I do. I have a profile that I. Not two of them that I use myself that contains the the GPG signing key and the code signing um, certificate information, um, and then I just do you know Maven release, perform, prepare, pre perform, and just do it. It's it's really pretty easy. So no, but you are having to answer the interactive prompts for release, prepare, and release, perform, or have you gotten past any interactive prompts having to be answered? I've never. I, I do uh, answer the interactive prompts, um, and so I mean that the part of it that I know Olivier and I talked about a little bit is how do we know when to trigger one of these, and then um, you know we'd have to set it up to be like a default um, answer to the interactive prompts or something like that. So couldn't, I was just because, wondering on the triggering of this. Couldn't we just have a different folder in the release.ci and then put some folder authorization on um, and allow access to the maintainers of remoting? So I think I think the, the, uh, 
the reason why I would not feel that that would not spe specifically like, like the idea of letting more access to that specific machine is because then we'll have to maintain uh, maintain our permission to, to release the other change to the So I was just more thinking maybe to have something like a front task that triggers Java or maybe when once we, ma we merge to master, we just automate the deployment. The thing is, for now, I think because it's only one component, it's fine to just for let's let's have me or whoever to trigger the, the thing. But uh, more globally, um, I, I feel like we are just opening a door here, um, and not only Jeff, uh, Jeff will we want to to to, to sign components. Well, but, but Jeff's Jeff's need is distinct in that he is currently he is already delivering signed components. There aren't any other plugins that I'm aware of or other components that are delivering signed except, I guess, the Windows installer, maybe WinSW. But in general, we the uh, Jenkins plugin commonly is not signed, right? The, the remoting is distinct that way. It it does sign and it should. Because then, then as a first iteration, I'm totally fine to just add a new job. Maybe under uh, like a team suggested, like we have a component folder, and under that co that component folder, we we just add that new job, and and that's it. And we maybe we trigger it when we need it. Do you have an idea how often you you release it? Uh, you're on Jeff, mute. I, you're, you're muted, muted, Jeff. Or silent. If you're not muted, you're silent. Same. You did you did unmute for half a second and then remute. Okay, there we go. <laughs> like clicking things so rapidly, <laughs> and not responding, but it couldn't tell what I was doing, or I couldn't tell what it was doing either way. Yeah. So um, typically, I only release remoting like once every few months. When I have something bigger that's going on, sometimes there's a little bit more to do. Um, Web sockets was the most recent significant example of that, and it was, you know, there's a little bit going on with that, but it's stabilized. Um, so, and the only thing I have actually in the queue right now to be concerned about is some work that I had going on that I don't have enough time to finish for a while at least. So, you know, it's not it's not terribly common, but figure like every couple of months maybe a release. Yeah, so I don't think it would put too much pressure on us if we just manually trigger the job from for now. Yeah. And then we can work on having a arm automating it or whatever. So, so Olivier, when you say manually triggering to keep the permission definition simple, it means you or uh, Daniel or Oleg would trigger because yes. you don't intend to grant Jeff permission to release.ci.jenkins.io. That's what I mean for now, yeah. Great. Okay. And that that sounds good to me for clarity. I just wanted to be sure I understood. Great. The, okay. the, the thing is, the thing is, if we grant Jeff means that we have to to, to update the configuration of release.ci.jenkins.io to have more fine grained control on who ha who can do what. And I'm, the only thing that I'm just suggesting here is just like we drop a new job with a new Jenkins file for remoting, and we just reuse what we have today. And so only the people who can trigger core releases can also trigger remoting. And so we move forward in this way. Great. Super. Yep. So okay. that's all. Yeah. So if you don't have any other question, I propose to. I'm and I'm fine with basically any of these proposals that we have here. I mean, I could continue the individual signing certificate, though I don't really want to. But the idea of keeping it and then you know me asking one of the existing maintainers, uh, Daniel, for example, or Olivier, to to release, I'm fine with that too. Okay, but uh, then I propose to first. Uh, I, I'll, I'll look at. Um, I, I'll try to to reuse what we have today to see if we can reuse that. And so, if it does not, if it doesn't take me too much time, um, I try to do it as soon as possible. So, if it does not work, or if I realize that um, I'm gonna need some more, much more time, then uh, we'll investigate other options. Sounds good. Sounds like we have a sufficient set of options and a sufficient understanding to proceed. Yep. Um, so then the next topic with while we are still speaking about uh, talking about the release environment, I don't know, Mark, if you had, uh, if you made any progress with uh, testing packages, um, 
did not. I still don't have the pull request ready. So right now, the there it's still me running those tests interactively. Because interactively is such a funny word to say. I edit a line in a file and run the job. Because I've been I've been wondering uh, recently because because I'm having now quite big PR that I would like to merge so for the for the LTS and the security releases um, I'm wondering what would be the best way to have a dev environment where we could validate um, this kind of work and I think it it could interest you as well because um, yeah we, we we would feel I mean I would feel more confident to to be sure that we don't break the release uh, process. Especially for stable and security one. Um, so right now, yeah, I try I try multiple options, but I faced um, issues um, because the release environment use specific um, settings like specific private IPs, uh, like access to VPN, access to Azure resources, and stuff like that. So I wasn't able to easily test the the release process on my machine. But yeah, this is something that I'm investigating at the moment. Great. Yeah, I'm, I'm certainly interested in whatever you learn there, Olivier. Now, Olivier, I apologize. I have to drop off in one or two minutes in order to join a, uh, a, a webinar that's about to start. Uh, sure. So I, I think we cover most of the topic, uh, the most important topics. So I don't know if you have any last minutes that you want to bring and, and, we, and we want to discuss. Otherwise, I just propose to, to finish the call here. Well, so I guess I should double check. Has anyone found any negative consequences of the dirty hack that I use of every seven minutes reconnecting the EC2 agents? The hack that I suggested last week. What's that? It's the hack I suggested last week. It is exactly the hack you suggested last week. I just couldn't find a way to do it uh, from remote. And so I cheated and do it locally on ci.jenkins.io. And it's it's exactly what you suggested, Tim, and it works quite well, as far as I can tell. It's it still leaves me feeling soiled. It still is dirty because it does yeah, yeah. It shouldn't have to do. But it's better than me doing it every ten minutes as a human being. Yeah, I, I think I think for now it's it's okay. But yeah, yeah. It, it gives breathing room. Right. That was, and it it doesn't actually solve the problem. Right. It just sometimes it just, we seem to get lucky and it hides some problems. That's great. And just yeah, we just delayed a problem, right? Which is what we're after, isn't that? We're waiting till we have more time, right? Yep. So okay. yeah. So I propose a finish meeting here. Uh, thanks for your time and see you on our team. Bye bye. Yeah.